do a gratin. It's, we're now in winter, so it's a perfect dish for that. And a gratin is both a dish, like this dish I have here, um, but it also refers to the browning that you get when you put a, a dish under the broiler and you get that nice browning color. And a gratin will often have a, a milk base or a bechamel, and that's where you're gonna get a lot of the, the color from. Mary showed the gratin was earlier, and that was a perfect example of that. And gratins are great because they tend to be a vegetable-based dish. And, and so you can use one or two vegetables. It's not a lot of vegetables. You're not making a casserole and you're making it very simply. And so it comes together really fast. It's a great way to use leftover vegetables in your refrigerator. And I'm gonna start with the, uh, actually putting the, the cauliflower together. Normally I would, Throw, put the cauliflower into roast and then start on the, the bechamel. The bechamel takes less than 10 minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and start warming up what I started on the bechamel. So with the recipe card you got, you're gonna start with a, a cauliflower head and you can, there's different ways that you can, can start trimming your cauliflower, but I typically will just put, pop my knife in uh, to the center and knock off the, the leaves there and then I'm ready to go. And however you want to do it, you can be rustic and pull apart, give it to some kids to get some extra exercise. <laughs> so that's one way to do that, is just to rip it apart. Um, or you can just go in here and cut the florets off. I do tend to keep a lot of the stem because I don't want to waste it. My buddy Sybil just, just did a book on wasting, not wasting food while you're cooking. And so that's always in my mind how to, how to use all those parts that we're not using. So you can take it and um, break it up into smaller pieces. Depends how much, how, how you want that to look. But I do tend to keep some flat pieces. And I like that because when I have flat pieces, then I can get some more browning action on the, the roast. Because if it's flat against the surface of the pan, you're going to get more flavor. Color means flavor. And so that's what we're going to look for with that. There we go. And I'm going to start with just put it in this small, this is a, a quarter sheet baking sheet, which is really small, but this is a really small cauliflower. So I'm not, uh, I would have less energy going into washing because I am the laziest cook ever. And then we're just gonna add some olive oil to that, about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half, whatever, that was probably, or about two. And the reason we want it to be well coated, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little grungy here, get my, my uh, cauliflower well coated. You can put it in a, a bowl with the cauliflower and toss it, like you would do it in a commercial kitchen, but then you, somebody has to wash that bowl. So again, anytime I can save on, um, that kind of energy, I will. And so I get it well coated and then I'm going to put about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And the salt here is not to make it, I don't have to measure by the way, because I know exactly what my pinch is. <laughs> I measured it. And now I don't have to take out a measuring teaspoon or washes. <laughs> so, um, so that's a quarter teaspoon of salt. But I don't, it's not there to make the, the cauliflower salty. It's there to make it, have the natural flavors of the cauliflower evolve so it tastes more like cauliflower that is what salt does for vegetables i've taught many classes on salt and there are many cool ways to reduce salt intake but with vegetables oof, it's really so helpful and that's that's what we do we pop it in the oven for about 10 minutes um and then check it and then a total time of about 18 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. I do tend to start cauliflower on the bottom rack and then raise it to the top rack. It does depend on how thick your sheet is and your temperature, but that is um, a quick way to, to get your cauliflower um, hot. Put it in the middle rack. If, it's, if that's easier for you and you prefer to just keep it simple, whatever works for you. And so I have a roasted version of it right here. 
So I did that this morning. So you don't have to hear my loud convection oven. I'm, I'm really all about trying to save your ears today. <laughs> my loud things. So the bechamel is a wondrous sauce. It is a white sauce that is super flexible. It has um, been around for over 300 years, yet we see it showing up all over the place still. Because of that, it's in, used in many cultures, in many comfort dishes, and it, it's one of those romantic sounding names, bechamel, that I think is glamorous. <laughs> and it's just a simple white sauce. But you, in the US, we see it often in gravy or it's, it's something synonymous with macaroni and cheese. So it's the basis of a lot of recipes. And I think that sometimes people have made it too fussy. It is really a hearty sauce. I am putting together, I've got here my roux, which is butter and flour. And I'm gonna add some water to it. And I already started pre-cooking this a little bit. So it's beginning to um, come together. And my recipe is a little bit uh, richer, or I should say in terms of flour, it's thicker. Typically the way to remember bechamel is two, 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 or one, one, one. So you don't have to ever look at a cookbook. So it is, if you want two cups of bechamel, you're gonna use two cups of milk, two cups of flour, I mean, two teaspoons, tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of butter. If I wanna make one cup of bechamel, I'm gonna use one cup of milk, one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of flour. Really easy ratio, a little bit more rhubarb flour will make it thicken faster. And the idea behind um, cooking it until you see it sandy and you see bubbles because there's water in butter and the bubbles will evaporate, then that is going to get you, um, the starch molecules begin to, granules begin to break down. And that allows them to absorb more liquid and that improves the emulsification so that a bechamel can last a little bit longer. So that's the idea behind the bechamel. Any questions, Anne? So no questions yet. A lot of people saying they cannot wait to make this tonight. And if they're in Utah, we got a ton of snow today. So it's the perfect <sighs> cozy, cheesy recipe to enjoy tonight. And then Lisa said something funny she, for the fromage four. She said, you can make it fromage tray four by including Limburger. <laughs> I like that. It was great. <laughs> the um, the the whisk for this, I'm using a, it's kind of like a, a balloon whisk. I don't really need it in a saucier pan because a saucier pan has a nice curvy, you know, uh, bottom. Whereas if you have a more straight edged one, you might use something. I've got just a few little whisks here. My little whisk bouquet. <laughs> So you might want to use a French whisk. This is a small French whisk that has a more narrow, um, so it can get in the corners of, of the, the pan. Some people like to use a flat whisk for sauces like this. So that is, is there as well. And I'm going to try and get this up to temperature a little quickly. But the um, other thing about the the bechamel is that it's a French mother sauce. It's one of the five French mother sauces. And then there are derivatives of it, which sometimes are called the daughter sauces. And so for this dish, we start with the bechamel, but then we're gonna add the Cash Valley Munster cheese. And it is unusual to put sliced cheese <laughs> in a dish, but this is what they had and it smells lovely. And it's got a nice texture. It's a melting cheese, so it does work great for this. Now, I will point out that Munster in French, uh, in, in France, uh, is not doesn't have an e in it, and it is a cheese that monks made. And apparently, French immigrants that came to Wisconsin started making Munster cheese. So that's my understanding. I am not a Wisconsin expert, but that, that's what I understand about that. So once I take a, a bechamel and I add a Mornay to it, um, I mean, I add cheese to it, then it's gonna become a, um, a Mornay sauce. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And that's, I'm still waiting for my, I'm using a burner I don't usually use. Like here. 
And another thing is that people often say, oh, you have to, you have to use more milk to get a bechamel together. And, and, and really it's just having room temperature milk is, is all you really need. Um, and that, that just, that just is quicker. It just allows the starch mo molecules to come together faster. So that is, that's all we're gonna do. And I just wait for about 10 minutes or less. Sometimes it takes, it's done in about six minutes. And then we have our morning sauce. Well, Michelle, you know what? I just love how you remind us how easy bechamel can be, you know? I mean, I, I you know, I have to do this more often because my kids will eat anything when it's covered with bechamel. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's a no brainer, you know, vegetables, whatever, you know? Um, yeah, so thanks for that. So yeah, we're heading on. So, so yeah, we, you don't have to wait for my bechamel to thicken. You already know what's going to happen. The drama is going to be, it will thicken. And then I will add some rosemary to it. This is a rosemary and bechamel. Actually, I'll put it in now. It is amazing how quickly the bechamel will pick up the, the rosemary. And the only thing I will mention is that you probably, if you looked at my recipe and you added it up, you'd think, Michelle, that makes more than two cups of ingredients. And you said it will only yield one and three quarters ingredients. And that's because you have evaporation of the water that's in the milk. Uh, and you also, with the rosemary especially, you pull it out, you're gonna have, you're gonna have nice, thick, yummy bechamel. <laughs> and so you can suck on it if you want, but just tossing, it does reduce the quantity uh, just a little bit. And this recipe also shows up in the Petit VA recipe that um, I sent you all for the broccoli and cheddar Petit VA. And that's what the man wearing um, cheese was designed for. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Oh, sure. Here we go. <laughs> Since you're asking, let me just give it a little stir. I put, I put some of the Munster in it. And this is a double batch. So I don't know if you can, if you can see, but oh, look at that nice, thick, uh, little bit of cheese. I'm going to throw the the rosemary in there too, and I'll take it out later. So, voila! So, Tian. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I could probably, you know, distribute it a little bit better. And then I'm gonna just put it under the broiler to get it much darker and get some crispy, you know, tops that taste extra flavorful. 